everyone, today we're just going to go over briefly my top six favorite fragrances for fall. This doesn't include the fragrances that I have that are marketed towards women. Now my number six is going to be is going to be an odd choice because I actually wear it a lot, but for me it just doesn't feel as quality as the other in this category, so I'll just go ahead and throw it up right now. It's going to be Lolita Lempica El Masculine. It's a great fall fragrance, and it definitely made the cut, but it just doesn't have that scent that I like. When I read up about it, I understood that it was very sweet, very inviting. It created a warm, soft aura around you, apparently, according to someone on YouTube. I won't mention who. But it, for me, it really is none of those things and does none of those things. It's a licorice -y, woody, burnt, sugary, very low on the burnt sugar kind of smell, which is nice and warm, but just not my style of scent. It's like a very sloppy gourmand. So if you like something that's woody, kind of green, and gourmand at the same time, I would recommend that. And it is great, it's just not my style really for fall, and I do have to give it props for being number six. On to number five. This one's going to be kind of obvious. It's going to be Yop Um. Yop Um being a powerhouse gourmand oriental spicy fragrance from the late 80s is great because it is a very warm, sweet, inviting scent, which is blooming and booming, if you know what I mean. If you wear it during a crisp, cool day during the fall, it's definitely going to suit you better than wearing it on a day, uh, say like today, where it's sunny and 60. You're going to get random days during fall, obviously, but you want to wear this on the cooler days. It will definitely stay on you forever and ever. You'll have to wash it off and you'll definitely garner some compliments, I think. Number four on the list is kind of another obvious one. I just wanted to go ahead and throw this out there because I really don't think a lot of people wear this. It's uh, Pie by uh, Givenchy. It's a very nice vanilla type fragrance. If you were looking along the lines of a tobacco vanilla au fraiche, I would tell you to go for this. It has everything that Tobacco Vini has except it's really green and it's a lot less spicy. It's more smooth, but it, on the other hand, it doesn't attain that niche type smell that, of course, Tom Ford's going to be able to do. For the price range on this, you can find this at Discounters. This is definitely a fantastic gourmand oriental scent. Like I said, there's some greenness in there from the herbs. Overall, as far as this scent goes, it's not too thick and it's not too thin for fall. And that's why I recommend it for fall and not winter. Number three is going to be on a lot of people's hate lists for a lot of reasons that I don't understand. And it is Bleu de Chanel. Bleu de Chanel, ironically, from its name, doesn't smell blue or aquatic at all. It's a really spicy, woody, pseudo-oriental vetiver scent. And that's what you're going to get on the dry down. It's just a very, very spiced vetiver with some sort of vanilla woods going along with it, probably cedar because there's also a touch of sweetness in there too. Number two is actually going to be a brand new one that just came out this year in 2011. This is by the house of Yves Saint Laurent and it is called L'Homme Libre. Um, this scent is reminiscent of Tommy by Tommy Hilfiger if you understand what I'm saying, whereas it's a fresh fragrance for fall. This scent is definitely fresh and it's definitely fall. There's some sort of, there's some sort of smoked candied something in there. It smells sort of woody. It could be the licorice interacting with some of the other accords, but like I said in this video, it's just going to be brief and I'm not really going to get into notes or accords or anything of that sort. All I can tell you is this scent to me is fruity, woody, fresh, and it's great for fall. So if you want to take my word for it, go out and test it if you'd like, but I can guarantee you that you're going to get some compliments and you're going to love wearing this for fall. Now my personal number one favorite for fall, and this isn't even out in the United States yet, I got it from Beauty Encounter a few weeks ago, I don't know how they even got it, but this is my number one pick for fall right now, and it is Cocorico by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Like I stated in my review, it has a very nice creamed rice sort of smell, which gives way to an even sweeter, semi-powdery woods paired with a green vetiver accord which turns the rest of that overly sweet powderiness into sort of a well-blended masterpiece. I recommend this. It's not going to come out until March, but 
for the next fall coming up, fall 2012. You definitely want to get your hands on this for that. It's, it's going to suit you very well and it projects like a beast. On to some honorable mentions. Um, obviously we're going to have Le Mal in there just because it projects so well. It's sweet. But the thing that sort of ruined it for me was there's difference in a lot of bottles. Um, this one obviously is not fake. It has Gaultier. It has all the information on the bottom. With the toilet made in France. Um, it's not fake, but this bottle smells totally different to another bottle I got, which is also real. This one having more orange blossom and really big hit of citrus, whereas the other one is a mint and vanilla bomb. That for me ruined it. it, it if, you, if you can't get, if you're a designer fragrance house and you can't get the batch consi consistent from a batch to batch basis, you really need to look at getting someone else to create your your perfumes rather than who you're having make them now because this it's terrible. I don't like it. Um, I'll wear it every now and then just because I did buy the huge ass bottle. But with this bottle smelling nothing of of the one I originally had. I mean, there's no vanilla or cedar or artemisia or cumin or anything else in this. It's just orange blossom, citrus, and a little bit of woods. It's nothing like I remember. But the old bottle of Le Mala I had, I would recommend that in my list, and it probably would be in my top six. One that people often don't know about or just plain avoid is Salvador Dali Por Homme. This one is very strange. It has a very dark and mysterious smell to it. A lot of people say it smells evil or satanic. I don't understand that at all. I think it's a really understated fragrance as far as not longevity or uh, just projection. No way. This thing is a monster in those, in those respects. But think of uh, if you smelled Zeno by Davidoff, think of Zeno by Davidoff Black. Um, something like that. It's very similar to a Xeno, except darker. My most, this has to be the one that wanted to be on my list the most. I own like three bottles of this. I have all three different formulations of through vintage up to current. This is the oldest formulation of Dior de Fahrenheit. It's a fantastic scent. Violet leaves. Violet leaves really come off as being prevalent in this. I, f I forget the notes list. Like I said, I I'm not going to really pull up notes for this video, but it's it's dark and sunny at the same time. And I do understand why someone could say this smells like motor oil. There's definitely leaves, greens, florals blended perfectly. Might I mention the sprayer on this is fantastic. Look at this. Cheese zooey. I'll be smelling that for hours. Well guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you like this page, go ahead and hit the subscribe button somewhere up here. And if you like this video or any of our other videos, for a matter of fact, go ahead and click down here. We'll have our website down here as well, as well as our fragrance group on Facebook. So you can go ahead and click that if you want to interact with us on a personal level. See ya.